So, as I mentioned, oh, this week they had the uh, New York Comedy Festival, which was why I was at the uh, I was in New York City working at the Beacon Theater. Um, it was so rid- this this was my weekend. I worked Dark Constitution Hall, where Eddie Murphy taped Delirious, and Chris Rock did I think Never Scared or Shoot the Messenger. I forget which one. Um, so I got to work that place, and then I did the Beacon. You know, which is the beacon. And then I got to do the Tower Theater in Philly. So um, it was insane. It was absolutely insane. And as if my week couldn't have gotten any better, uh, because it was the New York um, Comedy Festival, there was all these big-name comics um, that were in town. And uh, Bill Cosby was working at the theater down in Madison Square Garden. And uh, it was on my bucket list you know, I got to see this guy. I saw Carlin. I never saw Pryor. I have to see Bill Cosby. Um, I saw Don Rickles earlier this year. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that I should have seen throughout my career. And I never did because I was too busy trying to get better myself. And I was always like, I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him. And like, like, I never saw Carlin when I was actually a stand up comic where I could have appreciated him even more. I saw him in, um, I told you this story before. I'll tell it again real quick. Me and a buddy of mine saw him at the Cape Cod Melody Tent. And we actually went down there to laugh at him, if you can believe it. Because my buddy had convinced me that he was still doing his more stuff bit. That he hadn't changed up his stuff. So we were driving to the venue, drinking and laughing, going, more stuff. Like we just were like, we're going to go down there. We actually used to go out. Like I went and I saw uh, a live taping of the Morton Downey Jr. show. We would go out to go see stuff like that to enjoy it and also laugh at the people that that thought it was great stuff. Morton Downey Jr. was great, but come on, it was a shit show, right? Uh, we saw Dice. Um, we loved Dice. We saw him at the Worcester Central. We didn't go down there to laugh at him by any stretch of the means. We went down there to fucking laugh our balls off, and we did. Um, saw him at the Worcester Centrum. And, but we went to go see Carlin. We went down there to laugh at him, thinking he was going to do all his old material. And, of course, we go there, and he had a brand-new killer hour, and he was ten times the comic that he was the last special, just how he just kept growing throughout his whole career. So anyways, but I never saw him when I was an actual stand-up comic. I saw him when I wasn't a comic, so all I knew was this, this guy was funny as hell. Um, so anyways, long story short, I was flying to New York, and they had an article in the New York Post that said that uh, Cosby was in town and he was doing the festival. So I called up and I asked if there was any way I could stand in the back and blah, 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 and just check him out. And they hooked me up and they actually got me to the side of the stage. And I was thinking, oh, maybe, maybe he'll just walk by and I'll get to shake his hand. No, I don't want to bug him. I don't want to bug him. So I go backstage and, of course, there's like 40 people standing there because you want to go, you, you got to see Bill Cosby. So I'm standing there, and then this woman goes, hey, you want to go up and meet him? And I was like, meet who? And she was, and I'm like, Cosby? And she was like, yeah. So she starts walking up towards his dressing room, and I'm, it's like I had fucking mud, and I'm walking in mud, like I was, afr- I was afraid. So I'm walking, I'm going, are you sure it's okay? Are you sure it's okay? Because this wasn't somebody running the festival, this was just like a PA that was bringing me up there. And it's right before he's going on. And I'm thinking, like, uh, it just didn't seem like this was going to happen. So she walks up, knocks on his door. I hear somebody say, come in. That's not him. And they open the door, and there he is sitting there with one other guy. And so I walk in, thinking I'm going to get an intro from the PA, and she just closes the door behind me. (laughs) So now I'm standing there. It's me, this other dude. And Bill Cosby, the other two are sitting down and I'm standing up. And Cosby looks up at me and he just goes, who are you? And immediately my heart is pounding. I'm like, "Uh, I'm I'm Bill Burr. I'm I'm, I'm a stand-up comedian. And he he interrupts and he just goes, and why are you here? So now I'm going like, oh, my God, this is the fucking nightmare. I didn't want to come up here. I didn't want to bug him. I was tongue-tied. I had, I, there was nothing. I, 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 what am I going to, why, why am I here? I don't know why I'm here. 
I didn't ask to come up here. She just fucking dragged me. So it's three excruciating seconds after he said, and why are you here? And I'm just sitting there with my jaw on the ground. And then he finally lets me off the hook. And he goes, you are here because I asked you to be. And then he motions to a chair and goes, sit down. So I sit down. He had no idea who I was. I think he knew that I was a comedian. But I, I, I sat down. And immediately I just had this fucking ear-to-ear grin on my face that I couldn't wipe away. And I just, as I was sitting down, I was like, i got to tell you, this is like meeting the Pope. And he goes, yes, but way more entertaining. I can't do it the way he did. He just had me laughing. And he proceeded to just start talking to me about how excited he was about his new special and about the way that he shot the thing and and – and uh, the artistic way, he's like, you have to see this thing. And he was saying, there's no crowd shots. He goes, I don't want the camera on my crowd. He goes, leave my people alone. Let them laugh if they think it's funny. He goes, I don't want the camera on them. And then they get self-conscious and they feel like they have to. And he imitates their laugh and he does that Cosby. Ah, oh, did that thing. It was insane. So then he goes, he goes, I'm going to tell you something about shooting a special. And then he looks at the other guy. He goes, I don't think I should tell him this. You know what? I'm going to tell it. I'm going to, I'm going to tell it to him. And he turns to talk to me. And right then the door opens and the PA comes back and goes, Mr. Cosby, are you ready? And he goes, oh, yes, of course. And he stands up and he walks out. <laughs> so I never got to hear that, that. It's the secret of shooting a special from a guy who I, I think, you know, I, I've, I've said this before. I feel like Richard Pryor live in concert and Bill Cosby himself run the entire gamut of uh, it's like two perfect games. Um, I can't I can't explain it. And it's just one just absolutely like Cosby's just totally clean. Uh, then he says asshole one time, but it's totally necessary. It's just not an ounce of fat in that special, just wire to wire. He's just sitting down, killing, not cursing, just like I just – you couldn't do it any better as far as just a written special all the way to prior live in concert, which is just like – I don't – that's just – I don't know how to describe that style. Just open, free, going off. Not like you don't have your bits, but like those nights when you're just on as a comic and you're just tagging every joke and a three-minute joke becomes a five-minute joke and a five-minute joke becomes a 12-minute joke. And then the next time you do your, your, your set, you're thinking about how you did it the last time, so you're in your head, and then your three-minute joke that became a five-minute joke now becomes a one-minute joke, and you burn through an hour of material in 17 minutes, and you're on stage going, what the fuck happened? Um, anyways, those are the two perfect things. So anyways, then he goes downstairs, and he walks out on stage and just sits down. He has like a – you can't even see it. It's like this clear mic that um, almost like he would be like – typing into it on, on a keyboard. So it's hands-free kind of thing. And he sits down almost like a catcher. And he's just like, like he's sitting down on a stoop and just does like an hour, uh, you know, he was only doing like, there was a number of comics that were on it. Um, but he just sits down and f like he did 30 years ago when I saw him or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, it was 30 years ago. Just absolutely just total command of the crowd. I've, I've never seen anything like it. But there were so many people backstage talking and, and that type of thing that um, I'm st I still have to go see that guy live because I hear <clears> – <throat> they said when he did his special, he did two shows, both 90 minutes, both all different material. And I brought that up to him when I was talking to him real quickly. I still can't believe I'm, I'm saying this. Yeah, when I was talking to Bill Cosby and he said uh, – and he just was humble. He goes, well, you know, I've been doing this for like 50 years. I, I should have that much material, wouldn't you think? And it's just like, yeah, but it's that's all relevant, you know? 
Don't you have any topical stuff that you have to throw out? I mean, it's just unbelievable. So um, he's touring. He's out there. He's part of uh, one of the last ones from a generation that taught the rest of us how to do it. So if he comes to your town, I, I can't re recommend it enough to go out and go see that guy. But, uh, yeah, so that was my week. You know? That doesn't suck, does it? <laughs> I don't think so. 